You're kicking it with G on your favorite station. The perfect station. 92 KELZ, the only station with new music, new artists, new sound. We back from this break, and we in here with Ross Barber. What's, What's up, up, guy? What do you do, baby? What's what going do? on? What's good, man? What's good? So, you in here, but people don't know you. I know you, mm-hmm. but everybody else don't know you. Mm-hmm. So, for the people who don't know you, who is Ross Barber? Um, start off with, I'm a, I'm a doc- director, photographer, mm-hmm. producer, um, also a teacher, mm-hmm. and I believe to say a very good friend, you know, of others and people I don't know as well. Uh, that's that's really the gist of who I am, you know, mm-hmm. I'm real, real laid back, chill, and super motivated. That's my biggest thing. So, director, teacher, so before you became all these great things, how did you start? Where, where did this start? Where are you from? I'm from Houston. Uh, originally, Cashmere Gardens, North mm-hmm. Side. Um, we moved to the South Side, um, and then graduated from Pearland, stayed in Pearland, which I love. Mm-hmm. Love all all sides of Houston, mm-hmm. North Side, South Side, all that. Um, and that's that's pretty much where I started. And I low key was already um, into the production business without even knowing it. Um, and Adobe News, I got into that. And then in Oil Vision at both high schools, I was in both of that. And, and I didn't want to do it. And I still wanted to focus on other stuff, playing sports and all this other stuff. But it was like always there, you mm-hmm. know, it just kind of happened. And when they just kind of fell into it and I started doing music videos with people around Houston. And then one thing led to another, I was like, look, I need to learn how to edit. You know, I need to learn how to do this stuff. So let me just head over to our institute learned some stuff, and then I learned a lot, actually. Mm. met you. That's what we met on the very yeah. first day, yeah. <laughs> very first day orientation. And uh, just from there, you meet a lot of new people, and you learn a lot of things, and that's kind of how where I got to where I am now. Mm. But how did you get that spark, though? Because we all know we was all watching The Simpsons, Captain Planet. Well, I'm a little bit older than most of y'all, <laughs> so I was watching Captain Planet, right. like Captain, other things like that. But what gave you that spark to know film is where I want to be? Man. Uh, I would probably go back to um, my parents. They're big film gurus. Like mm-hmm. in their house, they have a big media room. Open the doors, and like the lights get bright, and you see nothing but movies. You know, and my mom, she loved watching Turner uh, movie classics, like the mm-hmm. old grayscale black and white movies. And my dad's a big comic book nerd, so like it was the mix of all of those. And they all go to the movies together, and we always went to the movies together. And so I think that's where it really started. And then my parents uh, would always ask, "Hey, so." Uh, what did you think of that movie? Why did why did you give that movie this? And we have to grade it, you know. But and subconsciously, I'm, now I'm watching them. Like, okay, why do I like this? What did this happen? You know, why in the Matrix it did this? Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And all other stuff to talk to my dad and my mom about it, and it kind of brought us closer together. So I think that's where it really started. Just as a kid, my brothers, my mom and dad, they all loved and had a passion for movies. And I was like, okay, well, I like doing it. My dad always filmed us too, you know, Christmas mm-hmm. and all that videotape. So we watch ourselves too. So we're always mm-hmm. acting and, hey watch this, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Not knowing what the director was, just, you know, doing it. I think it was just a natural thing for all of us because my brother's an actor, my other brother, he's an artist as well. So it's like, it's just kind of, it's a thing that was almost so always there. the film industry, pretty much all that was pretty much more bigger than sports in your house for most. Yeah, actually, yeah. That's, that's a flip. <laughs> that's, that's a flip. That is actually how it was because my mom, she loves sports. My dad, he really likes it. Uh, but it was always movies and TV shows, and we were always watching and asking questions. And it was my mom and my dad. They would go back and have debates and this, that, and why this movie was great. And it was just it was just something that was always in the house. So I think that's what it was. It was actually more than Man, sports. Man, you know what? I could be way off, but the things that you expressing right now, like it just hit me like right now, just really like registering to me, like you had your mom and your dad in the household Mm -hmm. and you had those family times and those family moments. So you was able to focus on something else besides other than let me do this so I can take care of home. Right. right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just like really coming to terms with like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Maybe so many people can't tap into those certain things that they actually like and things that they want to do because they so focus on, I got to make it here because I got to take care right. of this. I got to make it here to take care of that. Right. I feel like you was able to really just blossom and grow mm-hmm. in this environment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from that. Right. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because, honestly, that's one thing I really want to get into is to bring the media world into our community more mm-hmm. because we don't have that. We, we have a few. I mean, me and you, we know mm-hmm. directors and producers and things of that nature. But for the general public, they don't think of it as something that's cool. That's something that we should do. We should get into. Yeah. You know, and so that's one thing I really want to get into when it comes to the kids at the schools that I work at and tell them, hey, there's other things you can do. And with the way technology is now, they can make their own movies, make their own YouTube stuff all the time. Now they can do their own music videos if they just actually take the time and put their 
their knowledge at the same time that they do text and doing all this other stuff on Fortnite, which is great, by mm. the way, because I do play Fortnite too. <laughs> but but it's also like you can do that at the same time with your phone since everyone's on their phone now. Like I didn't have a phone that I can actually do anything with until high school. You know, they yeah. have it in middle school. And I'm seeing kids, they have the same phone that I have. They definitely <laughs> have technology way sooner than, right. you know, exactly. came in. So I'm just trying to think like what – let me let me backtrack that up. Right. Do you feel like the school system itself is really giving kids the opportunity that they say that they're giving? Yes, we all know we have a standard to go by, mm-hmm. but is it really opening your mind to think more, to do more? I think it is. It is honestly. I feel, and it's not so much the school system; it's the teachers itself. Agreed. The teachers are the Agreed. ones that are sitting there and, and telling the kids, "Okay, yeah, this is our curriculum," but you know, like what I would do with my kids kind of bring it to what they do in their everyday day life, you know, because a lot of times in the school system with the uh, tests, especially, it's mainly for a certain type of kids to pass. But if you put in, you word a certain things a certain way to where it's our language, it'll change and they'll grasp onto it. I feel like me, I know we got on teachers, it's totally off subject, yes. but it's just going yeah. down a little <laughs> thing. But I feel like teachers should be able to show both sides, their right. hustle side and their teacher side. Yeah. So they can, no and different too like okay yeah i know i have to learn some stuff but Mm -hmm. i can also do other stuff as well Mm -hmm. with that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it takes two because if all they see is hey two plus two is four you Mm -hmm. have to come do this this is the way it gets boring right it's just like that one toy you play with for all your life like right it's still my favorite toy but it Mm -hmm. sucks now yeah exactly looking at exactly exactly (laughs) yeah and that's the thing with them they you just need something fresh for them you need something to like get it just a little a little niche, a little nudge of, like, okay, it's a little different. I get it now because you're going to see the same thing all the time. So that's the thing. That's on the teachers to just give a little bit more. And I think they do. From what I've seen, I've experienced mm-hmm. from different schools and stuff that I work with, they do do that. They all are into it. And I think it's a lot. It's, it's getting better. I, I can see it. You know, I you know the media has all this stuff about in our community, the side and third. But I actually see no matter what, they have that drive. And mm-hmm. it's just that the teachers are there and the main ones to push them. And I think that's the best thing about teaching I've done so far. Okay. That, be, that actually brings me back to rewind this back to the next question I have for you. Me and you, we met in school. Like, right. we both went to the Art Institute of, school, uh, Institute of Houston for, for film. Right. You know what I mean? Is it necessary for you to go to school for film? Honestly, it's not necessary. Quote, unquote. It's not. You can learn yeah. anything and everything off of it. But... At the same token, like that's where we met, mm. right? And that's where you know, Mr. No, and we have other people who have helped us go further and and the way. So it's a it's a stepping stone. I never looked at the Art Institute as a school. Mm. That's why I went. I was like straightforward. I had like goggles on. It was it was a launch pad. It was mm. like, okay. Hey, let me learn everything I can learn when it comes to editing. When it comes to film. like I said, I didn't even want to do film at first. I just wanted to edit so I can not have to pay someone else for my music videos. I can shoot and edit and do everything. I didn't have to pay anyone else. But I fell in love with film, and so mm. it was like from learning the knowledge and learning the history of it you do get that experience and it does help you with your movies because nothing is new so everything that we've done someone else has done nothing it is right new. <laughs> everything so it's like okay instead of trying to reinvent the wheel let me go back and watch Sweet. Hitchcock and let me see what Orson Welles did because when you first start out you're pretty much on the same level as them because they only had a 50 millimeter mm-hmm. after movie here and there they didn't have CGI all the other great stuff that we have now so that's why I did I decided to take a step back and learn how they did it and I learned that kind of through school but mm-hmm. honestly at the end of the day you don't really need don't it need <laughs> as long as you have to hustle <laughs> on the drive yeah. you'll be good honestly that's what I'm trying to tell people like man you have to want the education you have to actually want to educate yourself you have to want the knowledge right. because it's not going to fall in your lap no. you're not going to wake up and be like I got this camera I got all the functions I got the angles I know exactly what I'm doing like Mm-mm. practice makes perfect right exactly <laughs> you know exactly. there's a lot of people that forget about that right all the way around. Mm-hmm. So that brings us back to the whole producing your directing thing. You in the film. How do you feel about the film industry here in Houston? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it needs some work, but it, I feel like at the end of the day, it is starting to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently, I believe last year, Pearland is a another part of the town. I'd still consider Pearland Houston. That they're allowing filming to be done there. And so that's a lot easier for... I can see that because it's more of on the... I mean, apparently it's still in the the countryside, but it got that land out there. Right, it's still suburban, but at the end of the day, it's still got like, you know, close to Alvin and all the other places on the back end. So that'll be good, but I feel like it, it needs more work. But at the end of the day, it's all about gas and the medical all that's here that's first and so we're always going to be hopefully third behind that but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of other stuff in front of us when it comes to houston and film but i feel like at the end of the day slowly but surely it's going to keep bringing more jobs in and i feel like 
we can do that okay. down so, the line. So besides the professionalism and the business side mm -hmm. of it, how is the film industry? We're talking about on the personal level, dealing with the people, working with these people, actually trying to even build something, you know, right, with, right, with these right, same people. Right. Yeah, uh, it's very few and far between. That is very that is very true, unfortunately. But I feel like the more it gets popular, it can be. Right now, it's really scattered and everyone's... I think it's kind of just Houston, because I hear from artists, too, sometimes. It's like everyone trying to, you know get their own instead of working together and I feel like once you understand you can do it together and move up it's not about the name it's about the product and I feel a lot of people think oh it's my name on this my name on that instead of okay hey we did this together we sent it all because it's, it's at the end of the day first it's of a, all it's we all know you can't do a movie by yourself you cannot no <laughs> no it is too hard it's too and but see, hey, people want too much credit it's That's impossible it ain't too hard it's impossible <laughs> for you to do a movie by yourself right Right, that is true. You, you gonna act and shoot it? How you gonna do that? No, nah, it's too you? long, and it's just. And then who's gonna tell you no? That's the thing. Someone <laughs> has to tell you no. Be like, nah, we can't do that. Because if everyone's saying yes, 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 you're gonna look at it and be like, dang, that's the best movie ever to you, <laughs> but not everyone else. Yeah. Everyone else, other people need to say something to. And that's one thing I learned too. You really have to listen to other people and like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, this is my idea. This is my, even maybe even be my movie at the end of the day. But I should take a step back and listen to what he says or what she has to say because it may be better than the idea that I had too. You know, but in Houston, I feel like we can we can do better. We have to, you know, because I was looking on other day for like certain gigs and stuff. It was like six here, and then in Louisiana it was like ten, but in LA it was like 135. I know that's where it's at, you know, but still, it's like we Houston and Galveston and surrounding areas is too beautiful not to have enough work to be done. Maybe during this interview, you can give some insight on actually where to look, because I think me and you both know. How do you feel about? All the frauds that's in Houston that puts on like this big project that takes advantage of all the smaller people trying to actually come. Up. Right. Uh, honestly, when it comes <laughs> to that, I feel like if they have, because I've been, I've, I've got got. We both got. We <laughs> <didn't> got, got. <laughs> I got got. You know, so it, it's just it's one of the things where at the end of the day, you know, you're going to start off, mm -hmm. so you have to do it for the love of it, regardless. Mm -hmm. Now you should be compensated because when you're working on a, on a production, no matter what you're doing, from a director to a producer or a PA, you're working hard the whole time, the you know, time. in the heat or in the cold <laughs> or whenever, you know, like, or if it's raining, you got to hurry up and get the stuff out the rain, like, no matter what, who you are, you're working the whole time, but it's an experience, so mm -hmm. I feel like you have to take that in consideration first and foremost, but also there are people who try and fraud you, so be careful about that, because mm -hmm. there's one person who, they send me, oh, you're going to get $1,800 starting off, but I've been in production already, so I'm like, you're not just going to give it to me, we haven't even had an interview yet like you don't know what i do my credentials so i already know like it's just it's played out well, i know what you're trying to do and there's a lot of that you know so you just got to be real real timid with it but if you do your background and you look at the production mm -hmm. you're going to find them on imdmb if they're going to pay you and they have stuff they have a history of, of work so mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing just make sure you do your homework so what major project have you worked on here in houston um i've worked on a uh, feature film sanitatum uh, about two, maybe three years ago now, 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three mm -hmm. years ago. Um, I've also worked with uh, ABC and some documentaries as well. And then I like to consider my project a big project. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> my, uh, my senior film, I've worked on uh, several, about nine direct, mm -hmm. that I've directed films all together. And my last one, uh, we, we shot last December. And I honestly say you can say that. Like for the people that actually listen, I honestly say that your projects are big projects as well because it's literally nothing to do if you have your stuff together there's really no big difference right. besides the money margin like yeah. how much money is like we have okay we got a camera guy we got food here for mm -hmm. everybody to eat we have all our ad's and you know what i mean have all our pas everybody's good to go so i'm just like that's right. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? We on, we on a major production. Now, right. I can say people need help with learning how to do the proper permits. Yes, that is, that is true. And that, that has to do with, like, different laws. And we have to go back and actually do our research, you know, and find out where we can shoot for how long. Because a lot of people say, oh, you can't shoot here, when actually there's no law that said you can't. They just don't want the production yeah. team here. They don't want. So if you do your homework and you find out where you can and cannot shoot, 
there's no one I can tell you anything. Because when I first started, we did gorilla style shoot. I was just like, you can shoot anywhere. Gorilla <laughs> shoot. Gorilla, gorilla shoot. shoot. You just Get go out there. there. And, <laughs> and gorilla shooting, for guys who don't know, you just go out there and you just shoot. And until someone tells you you can't just come out here no more and you just leave, that happened several times, especially because most of the people in our crew is a certain color. But see, I would so, say be real precise. Right. Like if you practice before, <laughs> that is true. the gorilla shooting uh, goes smooth. You right. out there, you in, you in, and you out. Mm-hmm. Now, if you get out there and you're trying to work on some stuff and mark out get lines and do and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. you're done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, man, but that's what's up, though. Like, so what could you tell a, um, because you've acted before as well, mm-hmm. like an upcoming actor that's trying to get themselves out there without getting taken advantage of? Right. Um, first and foremost, know what kind of actor you want to be. Because, uh, like I was telling a guy I was doing a photo shoot for the other day, he was just starting out. And I'm like, but you got to know who you want. You got to find out. Because some people, they look like they're villains. Like, they may be the nicest guy, but at the end of the day, you can put him in a black tie and black suit. Oh, he's a villain. He's perfect. You know, so you have to know who you are and what lane you want to rock with. You know, there's certain times where uh, this is the first film that I did, um, this senior film that I'm working on. Uh, um, it's an action movie, and I've done action movies before, but this one's like we're doing choreography, this and that. And the other ones I've done, it was just like the almost a dance on the stretch. They're a pretty boy, boyfriend who's getting beat up by this big jock guy, whatever. And it's, I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm still learning. You know, that's not who I want to do. That's not what I want to do. I want to do more action and stuff like I'm doing now. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you just take whatever you have at first and you learn from it because if this is not what you want to do you're going to learn quick and if this is what you want to do you're going to also you're going to be on it but learn who you want and kind of mimic a certain actor that you have in mind that you see who's a great actor or his movie learn that movie watch it and go and do your research on it if you do research on anything you understand why the actor and more importantly how the actor got into the role and the mindset because you have to do that for the whole time. It may not be one day and you're in and you're out. You gotta do that for almost a month. You know, maybe three months. Like we've been doing this movie since uh, May and we're about to hopefully be done in September, maybe October. So it's like, you gotta keep your mindset and you know that, okay, this is who I am. I'm not me, I'm this character, you know? That's the biggest thing. That's what people gotta realize. You gotta embody that character. Right, You gotta exactly. take on who that person is. Mm-hmm. We don't want to see your alter ego on the, on the right, screen. We right. want to see the character which that was written on the thing. Exactly. We don't want to see the person that you argue with in the mirror in <laughs> right, the morning. Exactly. Time. Exactly. But man, it's so, I feel like it's so many people that's really just trying to act, man, and just doing things just for it's a trend and it's a thing. Like mm-hmm. you have to really know your passion, man. You can't just up and just do something because your next friend or your next person over that you see is just doing it. Like different strokes for different. Folks. Right, right, facts. <laughs> right, right. And you also do photography, right? Mm hmm. Sir. We just got out of here with a model. Mm hmm. How do you yourself differentiate? God, I couldn't even say it. Right. <laughs> differentiate yourself from <laughs> other you photographers mm-hmm. that be taking advantage of people. When I say take advantage right. of it, come on over here, get near, get right. like, just, just the little perverts, right, them, right. them little guys. All right. Uh, so I think the best way I can describe it is. One time, I, this was back right out of high school, I was working at Bed Bath & Beyond, or no, Bath & Body Works, lotion and stuff. And the manager hired me because she's like, it's just something about you. You don't make women or you don't make me, even me feel awkward. And you're putting lotion because you know Bath & Body Works, you got to smell it, rub so it So you're on. saying you caressed her into no, a job, I, is what you're saying. I, I ain't caressed her. <laughs> I, I made her feel comfortable. And oh, I think, that's There oh. we go. I made her feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that's what it was. It was the fact that I just have this ability just to make people feel comfortable. And at the end of the day, it's how I look at it. It's it's art. It's beauty. So it, from the boudoir that I've done to the maternity shoots that I've mm-hmm. done, at the end of the day, they all have to feel the same, feel comfortable because the camera's not gonna lie. I can be the have the dopest Dutch. I can do this. I can do that. But if you're not into it and you're not comfortable it's not going to come out good and it's going to make me look bad, you know, and I don't want that. And and you're not going to want this because no matter what type of shoot it is, at the end of the day, this is a moment in time for you, you know, like you're not going to remember who I am, but you're going to remember the picture 30, 40, 50 years down the line in this moment in time. And I take that real serious. Do you ask for your do board, boot? Who door pictures or do they come and ask? No, you? they come and ask. I don't. You I, ain't never asked. I like, haven't. Let, uh, I'm like, no, nah, I've, I've thought. I was like, mm, but nah. I was just I, like, I don't even know how you would even approach somebody like, hey, you a model, you a model. Right. Let's right. take some naked photos together. Right. You see, and <laughs> there there are women who ask me, and they, they would love if I if I did it for them, but I'm still trying to figure out uh, exactly what type, because I have so many. I, I do bourgeois, I do maternity, but I also do landscape. And so there's so many different types of photography that I do. I'm also, I'm just kind of in the mist right now. So it's like, okay, she wants me to do one, and so I'll do it. And so uh, 
I'll have another one. I like I have several people who are inquiries. I want to do it, but they haven't gotten around to actually doing it just yet. And it's because they want to get comfortable with themselves. And so if I ask and it's like, it's more pressure and then I don't want to do that. So I just wait and then I just let them, okay, my price is what we can do and come up with. And a lot of it is just through communication. At the end of the day, you have to talk and communicate, make people feel comfortable because like I said to you guys, I let them know this is just art to me. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever, if you're in your lingerie or your butt naked, you know, it's, it's, it's all the same. It's all about beauty. It's all about how the, how the woman's uh, body is. And that's how art is. That's what art is, especially with the paintings. I go back to that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I look like now. I can't paint, but I can take a picture real good. So it's like, that, that's my version of it, you know. I was just, what is your favorite style of photography? We'll do videography in a little bit, but photography, right. what's your favorite style? Uh, I would have to say landscape, because that's where, for one, that's where I started off. Just with nature? With nature. And mm -hmm. uh, sunsets are my favorite. I've done a lot of those. Um, it's just something about it. Like, whenever I started photography, I would have pictures, and I would never post them. I would never show anyone, because it was just for me. And it was just an escape. You know, it's like I can go there, and that moment in time is when you send that sunset at the beach that I may have, like, from Jamaica or for uh, even in Galveston. You see that over over the um, the... The Galveston with the fairy prayer, so all that stuff over there. Um, it's just real. It's just that moment in time that takes you away from what you're pr currently doing. Like if you're at an office and you're doing this, you're doing that. It's just like I can take a deep, deep breath and I'm like, man, cool. And that's my favorite. That's my favorite type because it takes people away and it takes me away too. And that's what I love the most. Do you feel like you could pursue a career in it, or do you feel like you need a chance to pursue a career in it? Um, no, I definitely feel like I can pursue a career in it because. Just being around the camera, you you can pretty much do anything and everything. It's hard. Um, it's hard to go outside to be like, which tree should I take a you know, photo of right, right. today? A lot of that, <laughs> a lot of that, it just kind of happens. It's not something like I'm just like I'm looking for it. It's just kind of like I'm walking and I just look at it and it's like a painting that I've seen before. I'm like, okay, this would be a dope painting if I could paint, but I can't. So I'm just gonna take this this frame and this shot and because I go back on the rule of thirds and if it's on the rule of thirds if it works for me it's, it's perfect where everything is perfectly symmetrical yeah see and that's where because you know we all take being in feeling like we all had to take photos and do different things mm -hmm. but when it came when I always saw people taking nature shots I'd be like what possess you to stop right here <laughs> first of all it's so many different angles you can get that mm -hmm. give you the same right. like why this angle mm -hmm. why does your picture look better than my picture. Actually, it really don't look better than my picture, but it's the same thing. Right. Like, but all of a sudden, you got more likes than me because, hey, you got the lines correct. <laughs> you know? What yeah, I mean? right. Um, a lot of it is just. I think it's just certain people just have that that it. You know, that it factor where they have an eye for it. You know, certain people can sing and and rap, and but certain people so just see it. Crazy and it's crazy. Like, a millisecond. A right. second makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And okay, I got a picture with a bee on the flower. You took the picture with the bee flying to the flower. <laughs> like it's say, but yours right. look better because he ain't landed yet. Right. Like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's what it is. It's like, as a photographer, you may see like, oh, I've seen that picture before. I've seen a ladybug on it, whatever. But now it's cool because you see it landing, and it's just a little different aspect that you've seen you haven't really seen before. So I think it's just a little a little twitch in the matrix. You just see, it and it's like, oh, now it's in movement, but it's not. And I think that's one of the situations where they say a picture's worth a thousand words. It's like, oh, where's it going? What is that? What is that bee doing? You know, what what was that bee's life like? But if you see it's just on the ground, it's like, okay, I see it. But now it's in mo it's in motion. It's it's totally different. Your mind's running, and you're thinking about more things than just oh, it's it's just walking on a leaf. Videography, what's your favorite style of yes. shit? video. Man, uh, I really enjoy music videos, but I cannot get over film. When I, when I, once I got bit by it, man, it's just something, it's just something about what it. What type of film? Um, type of genre, I mean. Type of genre, I like really. Yo, go to. If it's anything, you pull a this genre, this is it. I would, I would probably have to say like a, a, a psychological maybe a thriller one of those it's not too much where it's like and it, it's between that and it's between a western a western because i love western that's just a deep i think it, i think I everybody westerns. grew up on westerns yeah. like you just can't get over a good way mm -hmm. and <laughs> good that goes western. to it like my mom she loved clint eastwood and r.i.p i think he just passed away not too long ago but uh, Clint Eastwood and yeah, the yeah. old spaghetti westerns and things of that nature. So it was like growing up watching those, watching the good, bad, and the ugly, and then seeing it. And then now they have like the values of Buster Scrubs, and you just see the scenery, which goes back to me being photography. Yeah. That's probably why I like it so much because those are my favorite type of shots. And you just see the beauty of nature, and it's just it's just a beautiful thing. So I think those two. I haven't done a western yet, 
but I would love to really get in, get my hands on that. I'm working on it, but that's down the line. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that Western is gonna take some work to yeah. Western though. Yeah, definitely. You gotta definitely find the whole outside area, everything. Right, yeah. all that. So, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Next five years, I one or two things. One or two things. Uh, first would be I'll be in LA, be in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is that is the main goal. Uh, my brother's already out there. I'm already planning on going out there because there's so many jobs and opportunities. But at the same time, I have so many things rooted here. Mm-hmm. You know, I have with my with my gigs and my production company. No one knows me out there. You know, everyone has that stuff. But here, it's like I'm starting to actually get a flow going. I'm having gigs every week. You know, I actually have one later today. You know, um, but also I'm working on um, a TV series, a TV show. Uh, called Zurific hmm. for kids, and so it's almost like I would like it to be like updated version of Bill Nye, Science Guy, teach kids about hmm. the environment, recycling, different things, and mainly I want to start in Houston. I want to be like a Houston station first, and then move around and, and expand because I don't know exactly what they do in Louisiana. Yeah. You know, I don't know what they do in Florida, but I do know what they do in Houston. I do know how we can change Houston's environment and our swamplands and, and our beaches and things of that nature, mainly because I have a background into it as well. And so that's that's one thing I want to do. So if I am here, that's one thing within the next five years I want to be starting up with the with the zoo and um, uh, the SPCA in different cities and different uh, companies around that deal with animals and straight on with mm-hmm. with all, all of that. That's, that's my biggest thing I want to do while I'm here. If there's one thing that we could add to the Houston film industry, mm-hmm. what do you think it would be? In your opinion, like in your opinion, from your experience, like what do you think would be the most helpful thing to add to the Houston film industry? I would, I would think the best thing for the city to do would be easier on tax breaks, because when you do that, more companies are going to want to come. You know, that's why they go to different cities and they go and go to different towns outside, like a street port and all those other places, because they give them better tax breaks. So that way, if we did that here, more companies would come here, which means more uh, industry, more opportunity for people. And you're already in Houston, so you have the revenues, you have enough money, you have enough uh, enough space to create things for the film and studios, like I said, in Pearland or in the surrounding areas. You know, if you do that, it'll be a, a domino effect. This is going to sound real, like, hmm, but... Houston, we got our own film commission, right? Mm-hmm. We should definitely just have our own studio, so that way all the producers right. and extra producers that we have here, we all can be under one roof, working under the same name, and okay, you shooting this video, we got this other script, okay, we got another producer and director AD ready to go, okay, you can shoot this script, we got you, okay, you can shoot this script, mm-hmm. and it still has to go right back up through the chain for it to be approved, so it just and to every in that way, everything that comes out of Houston is professional, done right, mm-hmm. pushed out, being distributed, and you have the resources. But we have too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Right, right. So let me ask you this. If that's what we need, why don't we work on something to try and get that for ourselves? And if no one else is going to do it. I agree. I feel, uh, I feel like Central Read uh, with Siri Global Media is actually doing that right now putting together the for the pieces to actually form my actual Houston team producing all the major films coming out through here it's actually in the works <laughs> being done like right now but it hasn't been done yet and so many people that like you said want to be on top and want to be the thing people don't want to take the back seat right they've been producing their own sure. films for the longest but now you can come over here be a producer for this powerhouse but you're not the CEO of this. Right. Now, I'll take producer. a back seat real quick. You know I'll be man? chilling for a little bit. I've learned because that's my biggest thing. You want to learn, you know, and that's that's the biggest thing I've learned about working and working for ABC and working for the Fox Productions when it comes to mine. It's like I'm learning how they do what they do right and, more importantly, what they do wrong. So I'm like, okay, they went left. Let me go right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Let me zig when they zag. Yeah. So I'll make sure I don't make the same mistakes. And, and I think that's the biggest thing is just learning who you are and learning what they did and what they did right, what they did wrong. Yeah. And then that way maybe – it can work out but also I feel like it'll be so much better if a lot of the people in theater because Houston's big in theater and they kind of crossed over to film mm-hmm. as well because they want to take theater and they want to go but if you have better actors which is like Denzel and a lot of other ones who were in theater first and then they move over to acting it makes life so much easier and I feel like that's what the film people need to do they need to kind of touch it maybe me I need to you do need that the well, I'm saying other people the <laughs> let me, right let me touch into the theater department and talk to them because it'll be a lot easier because yeah. what I worked with theater people they are a little overzealous but it's okay because you can bring that down a notch yeah. you know but with other people who've never done it they just want to try it and they get on and they kind of get stage fright things of that nature lights get on them and gets bright and more importantly 
the length of time that we're on set and you know it's a whole hands thing. get to sweating <laughs> i didn't forgot everything <laughs> right all that all that so yeah but um uh, but yeah man uh I definitely think it was a great interview talking to you for us, getting things going, sure. talking about the Houston film industry and certain things. But before you leave, uh, shoot all your information, social media information, so people can get in contact with you and follow you. For sure, for sure. Uh, you can catch me at Urban Rebel, Urban underscore Rebel at Instagram. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. I also have a production company, Urban underscore Rebels underscore Productions, um, <laughs> both on Instagram and everything else is on there for my YouTube page. I don't have Twitter. I need to get on Twitter, but I'm not on there yet, but I'm really just on Instagram and YouTube, so um, that's pretty much it, man, yeah. I'm just like you too, man. Twitter, I, I just actually recently got back on Twitter, and I was just like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, like, what am I supposed to do? Just right. talk about life? And my, my biggest thing why I'm not on Twitter is only because I don't want to get caught up five, ten years. My barber said this, and then it's like, man, nope. I'm not first of that. all, that's in the elbow. Right, right. So. It's something we, if they want us, they going to get us. So if right. we didn't say it, something, they going to make it happen. Well, so. See, that's why I don't get on Twitter, so I make sure. I, I, I may have told you in person, <laughs> but it well, was. If, if they, I hope they know I'm God-fearing, and that's why I'm in. So right. yeah, take it how you want to take right. it. Right. <laughs> You're kicking it with G on your favorite station. The perfect station. 92 KELZ, the only station with new music, new artists, new sound.